Rats in the kettle, my people, we gotta make it out. Headed in the wrong direction, we need another route. Revolutionary gorillas know what I'm talking about. Step before the shine of fighting for freedom. Trapped in the ghetto, my people, we gotta make it out. Headed in the wrong direction, we need another route. Revolutionary gorillas know what I'm talking about. Step before the shine of fighting for freedom. I was a youngin' on the block, serving government cocaine. Hopeless black team, paper chasing the man saying. Wait before you hate me, give me a chance to explain. Crack hit the streets and Uncle Sam was to blame. While my mama was a fiend and my father a lame. Victim of circumstances and that's how I remain. Till I got locked up and stayed in prison and change. It's Big JC, you best remember the name. George Stump, Jonathan, up as a counter terrorist. Blood in my eyes, urban gorilla fighting furious. Prosecutor Fibbing, just acting like he ain't hearing this. Persecuted lynching our people every experience. Free them all, crackers, we screaming, running up in this bitch. Asian ass industry rappers, writing and getting rich. Killing snitch, nigga, bitch, RBG the politics. Free bad nation, we empty, fully extended clips. Trapped in the ghetto, my people, we gotta make it out. Headed in the wrong direction, we need another route. Revolutionary gorillas know what I'm talking about. Step before the China while fighting for freedom. Say that. Black Stars Network. Um, stands in solidarity with the family of Juwan Martin. Uh, Rakia Boyd, uh, Kenneth Hart Jr., uh, Bo Morris, we go on and on and on and on and on around the situation where our whole community is insecure, whether it's in our personal self-image, whether it's in our physical being in our communities, whether it's in our political state or economic state, we have no security. And the reason we don't have security is because we're constantly under attack. And as a consequence of us being under attack, we haven't organized ourselves for self-determination and self-defense. And so that's the purpose for this meeting. This meeting right here was really, and we're going to have a question and answer period where those of you out there who want to make comments and ask questions will be able to. This is really a community gathering. This is how it starts. Um, we are organized. We are developing programs, creating events um, of that nature, but we can't do it without the consent of the people. And so we want to build consensus so we can say, okay, well, we had an event, 55 to 60 people came. Out of that 55 to 60 people, there was a general consensus that security is necessary in our community. So now we know there's a base of support that we move forward. And um, it's just the process of organizing, the process of getting to know the people who are stepping out front lead the way as well as those who stand with us. And um, all that to say, I'm going to move on into my presentation. I just really want to appreciate um, all of you being out here today. Um, let me just be frank and just say right out front that there's many, many, many different types of brothers and sisters in our community. And, um, and some of us have a little bit of faith in the system. Some of us have all faith in the system. I am one brother that has absolutely zero faith in the system. I have no faith in it. We can't find justice in it. If we have not found justice in it, and we never will. And um, you know, that's my conviction. And that's what moves me. And so I want to paraphrase Martin X. A common, a common leader, a common ancestor that I think we all respect um, on a few things. Just to paraphrase it, to kind of set up the next few things I want to say. Um, Malcolm X once said that expecting the United States government to deliver freedom, justice, and equality to black people is like expecting a chicken to lay a duck egg. Y'all ain't catch that. That went right over your head. He said expecting freedom, justice, and equality for us in this society right here, right now, today, is like expecting a chicken to lay a duck egg. It ain't gonna happen. What you waiting for? It's impossible. It's not in the chicken system to produce a duck. Just like it's not in the American system to produce freedom, justice, and equality for black people. And if it is, where's your evidence of that? Where's your evidence of that? Um, Situations like Trevon, it just really just exposes the vulnerability of us, the disunity of us, the weakness of our movement, the lack of ability to enforce and impose our will as we want to, as we choose to. That's a problem. I 
that means no matter how many rights we say we got, we ain't free. That's what it means. We can't employ ourselves, so we depend on someone to do that. We can't secure ourselves when we're under attack, so we got to depend on someone else to do that. Right? We don't educate ourselves because all the resources that go to education is controlled by other people, right? So the question is, what do we control? And if we don't control that, then how are we free? It's an illusion. It's been bombarded on our brains for a generation after generation that somehow we have an inkling of freedom, and we don't. And so I'm here to keep that in front of you and continue to remind us that we ain't free and that we have a right to fight for that. Um, Malcolm also said, when asked about the progress that was being made by the Civil Rights Movement at that time, said, uh, they asked him, you know, what how do you feel about the progress? Civil Rights Act being enacted, you know, how do you feel about that? And Malcolm, witty, humorous, right on point like always, he said, uh, you don't stab a person in the back with a nine inch knife, pull it out three inches, and say it's progress. Yes. Yes. He said, in fact, it ain't progress until that knife is fully removed, the scar is completely healed up, and uh, I, I always like to add that the person who stabs you don't have an equal wound or, or worse. That's, I mean, that's my addition to it. You know, you stab me, and, and you know, it ain't over until you get stabbed. But uh, that's just me. I mean, you can have your own sense of justice, you know. But I said, uh, they had no respect for a system that would beat the people down to the ground, hold them there with, with, with their foot on our necks, and then blame us for not being able to get up. How do you do that? I mean, how does a rapist see a beautiful woman walking down an alleyway, grab her, body slam her, ravagely sexually assaults her, and then says, well, it's because you're so beautiful. How does he ever come to the conclusion that somehow the victim is to blame? Yes. And so, um, I mean, in the mind of, you know, a sexual predator, or, you know, because, you know, our enemies are sexual predators. Uh, you know, in the minds of dominators or conquerors or exploiters or people who seek to parasitically exist off of your labor, off of your resources, off of your fear, then you have this, this uh, mentality where they attempt to justify the criminal acts that they do to us. And so, um, around the Trayvon issue, I've just seen so much of that happening. I've seen it coming from so-called leaders in the community where as soon as we would say, you know, this is wrong, they would say, well, you know, black people kill black people. You know? Well, you know what? Well, black people kill black people. Which is valid. It's real. But we ain't talking about that right now. Because Trayvon wasn't killed by a black person. He was killed by a white supremacist, which, I mean, and I'll be honest, most black people that's killed by black people are killed by a white supremacist. They're killed by a black person who has internalized white supremacy and black inferiority. Yes. Absolutely. And so, um, it's not just a question of the complexion of the person pulling the trigger, but the mindset. And, um, and um, at the end of the day, it all is a disservice to us and is a service to them. Yes. And, um, you know, there's one set of morals and ethics that you're supposed to have when you're at war. There's another set when you're at peace. We can't have a peaceful set of morals and ethics in the midst of war. But that's what's happening. We're being taught peace. We're being taught to be calm. We're being taught to be trusting, loving. When the reality is we should be mad as hell. We should be swinging. We should be organizing. We should be returning war for war. Because only through war can we establish peace on earth. And so for us, we have to recognize that. Yes. Black folks in this country must accept the historical fact that we have been a captive population under white rule since we were first brought to these wretched places. In the progress, in the process of our enslavement, it was necessary for our enslavers to strip us of our fundamental human right to self-determination, the right to rule ourselves, the right to have our own institutions that serve us, that right we don't have, and if we do, prove it. Show me where it's at. Anywhere for black people exist on the earth. Even where you think black people are in power, 
They are puppets of white power. Yes. Where do we truly have our own power? You can't find it. You can't find it. And so um, we were robbed of our basic freedom to organize our own independent community based systems of governing and commerce. Even in the reconstruction period following our emancipation, when we began to build all black cities and marketplaces like Tulsa, Oklahoma, yes. the United States government aided and abetted the general white population, the general white population, the majority of white folks, um, aided and abetted them in their terroristic invasions yes. and flash mob violence in our communities. This is documented. This is, this is the reality of the thing. Uh, and you can read about Red Summer of 1919 when there were uh, over 25 race riots in which black people and property was the targets of white flash mobs. And I know we can say, well, back then, you know, that don't happen no more. But we just had the same thing happen in the form of a subprime mortgage scandal yes. that, that extracted more wealth out of the black community in this society than ever before. Yeah. So the form may change, but the substance doesn't. There's a constant forceful transfer of our resources from our communities into the pockets, into the communities of white people. We can't deny that. I don't care what your religion is. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're male or female. The reality is that everything we have has constantly been being taken from us, and then we wonder why we're poor. Our poverty is imposed. It's yes. not because we're stupid or lazy or dumb. It is imposed. If all of us go look for a job today, there's not enough for us. We can't provide for ourselves. That's why we're so dependent. We're forced to be dependent. Yes. We must understand that white wealth and privilege is based on the foundation of black poverty and disadvantage. Yes. Historically, in periods of general economic crisis, the general white population becomes increasingly hostile yes. toward the general black population. And so, in situations like, not just Trevon, but let's talk about Rakia Boyd in uh, Detroit. Brother walking down the street past an officer and police officer. He got a cell phone to his head. For whatever reason, this cracker felt like he was under attack and he mistake the cell phone to the brother's head as a gun. Like, why would he walk down the street with a gun to his head? But in response, he reached out the window and sent five shots at this brother. He blew his thumb off and he shot Rakia in the head. Rakia died three days later. This happened since Trayvon. 18, 18 years old. This happened since Trayvon. We ain't heard about her. We ain't heard about her. You know why? Because those boot licking Uncle Tom that have been the parrots and puppets for white people for the last 40 years are setting the damn political agenda for our communities. Yes. They get to determine what issue is important or not. Right. Jesse Jackal and Al Charlotte, they get, to, they get to determine where we're going to rally at, how many people are going to be there, if the police are going to be involved. They get to set the terms. Yes. We need to fight for that power. See, there was a time in the 60s, 50s and 60s, where there was a, a, a struggle between that sector of our population that had a physical, material interest in integrating. And, and you know, the typical house big as, you know, Michael May said. But then those, in the, those of us in the field, those of us in the ghettos, those of us poor and most pride, we begin to organize our own autonomous movement. We begin to challenge them for the leadership over our people. And that's what happened. And so over the last 40 years, under a fierce assault against that movement, there's been a very low level of activity among us.